Welcome to Math City with Miss G. Today we are going to talk about factoring polynomials with a leading coefficient that is equal to 1. Okay, so um, what is a leading coefficient? So going back to the standard formula for um, polynomials, we will have ax squared plus bx plus c. So the a that we are talking in the title is this a leading coefficient. So when that is equal to one, this is the topic that we it, that it is referring to. So the first thing that we are going to do is to make the equation be equal to zero. So I would do inverse of negative three b, which is positive three b, on both sides. So then I can make the equation equal to zero. I cannot add b squared plus 3b because they are unlike terms. So we'll drop b squared plus 3b equals 0. So we are going to find factors. Okay, so factor, the common factor in here is b. So you see a b on the first term, you also see a b in the second term. So we're going to take out b. We'll, write, we'll take out b, and what is left is b squared. We subtract the exponents. So uh, we are left with b, quantity b plus, and then this right here, b cancels out. And so we are left with 3 equals 0. So isolating b, this will be b equals 0. That's one answer. The other answer would be b plus 3 equals 0 and then we're gonna subtract 3 on both sides to isolate b by itself so b is equal to negative 3 so solution for this problem is 0 and negative 3 all right let us try another problem number 2 so First step we need to do is to make the equation equal to zero so we can start factoring. So inverse of a positive 5n, I am going to do minus 5n on both sides. So this will make the equation equal to zero. On the left side of the equation, there is nothing we can combine because there is no like terms. So we'll just drop them down, n square, minus 5n, minus 14. I will be using a table in order to factor this trinomial. So there are three terms, one, two, three. That's called three terms. So this right here, we have our a, which is one. A, this is b, which is negative five. This is c. So I will write on the table c, b. It's like a formula. So the c value is negative 14 b is negative 5. We're trying to find factors of negative 14, two numbers that we multiply that will give us negative 14, and when added gives us negative 5. So I believe that should be negative 7 times 2. And then adding this to negative 7 plus 2, that is equal to negative 5. So it checks the box. All right, so we can set up our factors. So um, n square is equal to n times n. And then using the factors we found, that's minus 7 and plus 2. All right, we got one more thing to do, and that is to isolate the variable n by itself. So the first factor, which is n minus 7, is equated to 0. n plus 2 is also equal to 0, isolating the n by itself. Or you can just simply take the inverse, and that is the answer. So inverse of a positive 2 is negative 2, so n is equal to negative 2. You can do it that way as well. So our solution for this problem, solution is equal to um, negative, negative 2 and 7. All right, let us try another problem. How about this type of equation? So 
I will show one way to solve number three and then a different way to solve number four. So uh, I will apply what I did in problem number one and two by equating the equation or make the equation equal to zero. So I'll do minus one on both sides. So that would be x squared minus one equals zero. Now double check are these perfect square numbers. So um, I'm not sure. So what are numbers that we multiply to get x squared? It's x times x. Okay, that's a perfect square because it's exactly the same variable. What about one? Yes, it is a perfect square. Why? We're multiplying negative one times one, which is equal to negative one. So therefore we can set our answer or get our answer and we will have x plus one x minus 1 equal to 0. So in polynomials, remember, if you remember polynomials, if we, ha we have a perfect square and then separated by a minus sign, so we call this difference of squares. So yeah, this belongs to where uh, some type of a shortcut, that's why it's called difference of squares. So isolating x will have x plus 1 equals 0 and then x minus 1 equals 0. Take the inverse. So we've got negative 1, and the other one would be positive 1. So solution for number 3 is negative 1 and positive 1. So this is one way to solve this type of problem. Another way is to extract the square roots of both sides. Okay, so there is no extra number but n squared on the left. There is no extra number on the right but 36. So we can extract the square root on both sides. So square root of n squared is n. It's a perfect square. n square root of 36 is 6. Now, let's double check. Remember, 6 times 6 is positive 36. And as well as negative 6 times negative 6, that is also equal to positive 36. Therefore, our ans there are two answers here, the positive and the negative 6. So we have n equals positive 6, and n is equal to negative 6. So this is another way to solve this type of equation. So the solution for number 4 is negative 6 and 6. All right, let us try another problem, number 5. Okay, so we want to make the equation equal to 0 so we can factor the equation. So we, I am going to subtract 24 to eliminate the 24 on this side. I am also going to subtract, no, not subtract, but do inverse. So plus 2n on this side and plus 2n on the left side. So this will make the equation equal to 0. Now what happened on the left-hand side? Double check, there is no like terms on the left-hand side. So meaning, we are going to drop each of these terms one at a time, starting with n squared. My, um, plus 20 plus 2n minus 24 okay so we have trinomial one two three three terms i'm going to use a table to find factors of these numbers so c and b c is the last term negative 24 b is the middle term which is two coefficients of the numbers so factors of negative 24 what are two numbers I multiply that will give me negative 24? There are multiple. But I believe we, I am looking for 6 times negative 4. Why? Because when I add 6 plus negative 4, it gives me positive 2, which is the middle term. So it checks both boxes. When I multiply, it gives me the last term, which is C. So I can set up my factors. So N times n, which is n squared, using the factors I found, plus 6 and minus 4. 
Now isolating the variable n, I will have n plus 6 equals 0, n minus 4 equals 0. Take the inverse of each equation, so n is equal to positive 6, and this one would be n equals positive 4. So solution for this problem is equal to 6, um, oh, I made a mistake over here. I'm sorry. This is supposed to be negative 6, inverse of positive 6. So negative 6 and positive 4. All right. Let us try one more problem. How about this? Okay, so again, we can only solve this equation right uh, just like this type of problem when the equation is equal to zero. So I am going to subtract 2x on both sides. And on the left-hand side, there is nothing I can combine. So they are all unlike terms. So I'll drop each term one at a time, x squared, minus 2x plus 1. So we have trinomial 1, 2, 3, 3 terms. I will use a table to find factors of these numbers. So I have C, B. C is positive 1. B is negative 2. So I believe the factors I'm looking for is negative 1 times negative 1. That is equal to positive 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1. That is equal to negative 2. And so, therefore, I can now set up my factors. So that would be x times x, which is x squared. And use the factors I found, minus 1 and a minus 1. So equating each of these factors equal to 0. So x inverse of negative 1 is positive 1. Same thing as the other answer. So the solution for this problem is 1. We're just going to write 1 one time because the answer that we have doubles and it's they're the same one. Okay. If you find value in this video, please hit subscribe and share, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.